Hello, everybody, and welcome uh, to this uh, new webinar. Uh, I'm very pleased uh, to moderate this uh, uh, session. Um, we are going to launch uh, uh, to present the National Open Access Monitor in Ireland. Uh, and this is uh, the first webinar of uh, um, a series of uh, uh, training uh, that we will do with the, the research performing organization in Ireland, the, the research funders organization, and uh, uh, the community in, um, in Ireland. But uh, this is a public uh, webinar, so uh, to show to everybody uh, the infrastructure that uh, uh, is provided by Ireland to move on in open access. Uh, so some uh, housekeeping notes. Uh, this webinar uh, will be recorded. You can ask uh, uh, questions or post uh, your comments via the Zoom Q&A section. Uh, you can also upvote the question that uh, you like and uh, that you want the speakers will be addressed first. Uh, we will make uh, the webinar available uh, shortly after our uh, uh, webinar. Uh, so now I am the pleasure to introduce uh, the speakers of today. Uh, Susan Rayleigh, who is uh, the director of uh, the Irish Research Electronic Library. Natalia Manola, who is the CEO of OpenAI. Joanna Gripari, who is uh, the technical project manager of OpenAI. Uh, and uh, mainly behind uh, this infrastructure for uh, the National Monitor uh, for Ireland and the Leonidas P. Spiritels, uh, who is uh, uh, another uh, technical expert in open air, uh, who is uh, working a lot in this platform. Uh, so now I am handing over to Susan. Hi, um, good morning, everyone, and good afternoon to our European colleagues on the call as well. Um, I'm very pleased uh, to be here today to, to um, showcase the, uh, the National Open Access Monitor and to announce the, the launch of the, the, the baseline report that's, uh, that has been released today alongside the monitor. Um, I think most of you will know the origins of the um, open access monitor project but just to remind you um, the national open research forum uh, action plan for open research was launched in, now in november 2022 it had three th th themes and one of them um, theme two is to um, enable 100 percent uh, open access to irish research publications and in that under that Theme, the first priority was to develop uh, a national open access uh, monitor um, to promote transparency, enable progress to be tracked, allow for identification of, of gaps and targeted interventions to ensure equity and open ac access in Ireland. So um, IRL has taken on responsibility for for managing this pro this North funded project, um, and it's been led by Catherine Ferris, um, who can't be with us today, but has worked hard to make sure that the project is open, transparent, and consultative. Um, over the course of the past few months, we have worked on agreeing um, a community agreed definition of open access and uh, establishing shared criteria for monitoring open access. And these criteria have been taken forward in the monitor that you've seen today. Um, I've, sa I've said that the process has been consultative and it will be um, continue to be. The development of the monitor is very much um, a collaboration in terms of working with stakeholders in the Irish research land landscape to um, ensure that it meets the needs of those stakeholders. So I encourage you to engage with Open Air over the next few months to help improve um, the monitor. The report on open access in Ireland that has been produced in Open Air shows that we've actually come a long way in terms of achieving 100% um, open access. Of course, we're not there yet by a long shot, and there's a, a lot to be done in terms of um, 
particularly in terms of improving uh, metadata, the consistent adoption of persistent identifiers and improving the, the traceability and fairness of our um, open access publications. Uh, the report points to actions that we can address at grassroots level, but it also points to actions that need to be addressed at a policy level and um, in terms of investment in infrastructure. So I encourage you to, to take a look at that report and to um, feed back on, on the monitor to help, with, to help us get to the point of, of um, having a, I guess, um, a world-class, uh, not just monitoring system, but a taking a leading approach to achieving 100% open access. So with that, uh, I think I'll, I'll hand you over um, to our, our next speaker. And um, we are looking forward to hearing more uh, of your views on the open access monitor. Thank you, Susan and uh, Natalia. Now the floor is yours. Yes. Thank you, Julia. Thank you, Susan. I think I will try to be short. You know, I have uh, people who know me that I'm never, you know, brief. Uh, <laughs> is that, first of all, I would like to start with two remarks. Um, I think what Ireland is doing and the way that we are they are approaching uh, this monitoring and all of open access and open science is remarkable. It's a community effort, and I think it's it's an example for others to follow. Uh, for us in open air, we have we are supporting them to build the monitor. But I think what we uh, what I need to say is that we have learned a lot from the processes, from the transparency that we have seen in all the processes and from the community engagement. And unless these things are in place, uh, we don't believe that you know things will be successful. So thank you to to all the, 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 the collective effort. Um, let me say a few things about how we are approaching it before my colleague Joanna and Leonidas uh, take it uh, forward. Why are we involved in this? Uh, for us, uh, in our strategy, uh, one of the key, uh, um, key aspects is not just to uh, propagate and to uh, promote open science, but also to monitor the uptake of open science policies. And what we all need to understand in this is that we're not monitoring uh, to penalize. We're not monitoring uh, to, um, to see how uh, well we're faring. I think what we are doing is we're monitoring to improve, to learn from each other. And this is, I think this is, will be the great, uh, the great challenge on how to present it and the great benefit of the, of the Irish monitor or any other monitor uh, at the country level. Uh, also, what is important, and uh, we are thankful to um, to the uh, to the nor to the north, is that from the beginning, because due to transparency, they chose uh, they had the 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 uh, the requirement and the mandate to use open sources, and uh, I think that happened about a year ago. But now the community is around building on this notion of open um, infrastructures. And I'm just uh, having here the the, the UNESCO uh, December meeting on um, on monitoring framework with open technologies and open data. And as we all know, and uh, for us that we are following the 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 developments, this is now the trend. So I think uh, the Open Irish Monitor will be one of the trend centers, if if I may. Now, uh, if I can come back to the open air and how we're building it, my colleague, as I said, uh, will uh, elaborate on that. But what we have been building um, in collaboratively, again, in open air with all our members um, is the open air graph, which we consider a global asset. So this is, um, this is a graph, knowledge graph, a scholarly communication knowledge graph that is trying to have um, data from many places and interlinks them together. So we we are trying to do that in a very transparent, in a never, in, in in a very open way. And what we would like to to do also is to uh, invite the community to work with us to make sure that whatever is being done at the country or institutional level, pre systems or national pre systems, that we are aligned because this is very important for Europe. Uh, the other thing that I would like also to stress is that when we talk about open access monitoring, this is just one slice. 
in order to assess the open access or the open science monitoring is that we need to have data from all over the world. So what is uh, about you know uh, how we can collaboratively work is to to build these small data sets around the world, each of us in our uh, little corner of of the earth. Uh, and to make sure that you know, what we, we do is we have very well curated uh, sources and that we uh, link to each other. And I think North, apart from uh, apart from the from the open access monitor, the other the other uh, efforts that they are doing and their initiatives is the repository uh, initiative. All of these are very important so that you know uh, and they, they're not, they're not just important, but they are interlinked. So it is very, it is very um, much appreciated. All of the efforts that uh, that Ireland is doing, um, just to give you some ideas, because we're talking now about publications. Open access uh, is uh, the monitor. The Irish monitor is about open access to publications. But we are moving slowly towards uh, counting, you know, other research uh, outputs uh, like research data, software, and others. And we are getting there. So, so the community, uh, we are, I think, in a very well, uh, you know, good spot in order to do open access publications. But we also need to move into thinking about uh, other types of research output. Uh, and um, I will close my 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 intervention here by saying that this is a community effort, and I just want to show you. Um, how the open air graph, because we, you will find that on, on our site, graph.openair.eu, is uh, how we are. We have started from here. If you can see my cursor move, we have started from uh, from 2000, from uh, from August 2023, and then because of the Irish monitor, we have so much improved the processes in in this in this uh, in this how we do affiliations because. We had to actually um, uh, answer to a community problem, and this is how we would like to work with other countries in order to, you know, to see this trend increasing, and to all of us in Europe, at least in Europe, to 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 collaborate and make sure that, you know, this is uh, this is uh, something that we are all proud of and that we can all use of. Um, so, so I think uh, just to to close again, I. In my view, I, the Irish Open Access Monitor is an example for other countries to follow. And um, let me tell you is that already we have seen, you know, we are seeing many countries knocking on our door to do, you know, to repeat, uh, to repeat the exercise. And with that, I'm I'm closing and 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 uh, and handing on to to the next speaker, Johan. I think. Hey, thank you, Natalia. Um, let me share my screen. Okay. Um, can everyone see my screen? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, so I'm going to give a brief presentation uh, and then I'm here with my colleague Leonidas. Uh, I'm going to give a short overview of the platform, discuss how we build it, uh, give a demo, and then uh, Leonidas will present the various support options that we have and the next steps for the improvements of the monitor. Okay, so the monitor is hosted in uh, the address that you see here, and it is accompanied, as Susan uh, mentioned, by uh, or maybe Natalia too, the National Open Access Monitor Island Report, which provides the baseline analysis, kind of the starting point for Ireland, uh, that, uh, and also includes um, areas for improvement, strategic solutions, and so on. And you're welcome to take a look and uh, give us your feedback. Okay. Um, uh, as we discussed already, the main objective of the monitor is to provide transparent and comprehensive insights into the state of open access in Ireland and to serve as a crucial tool for analyzing trends, identifying challenges, and guiding policy development and decision making for various types of uh, users and stakeholders. Currently, we're at the pilot uh, phase 
and uh, we are focused on enhancing the data quality and refining the platform and its functionalities. And we aim for the final product delivery to be in uh, June 2024. So we're working very hard on making this a production quality monitor and we very much uh, welcome and uh, need your feedback. There is a contact form available in the platform and I have provided the link here and uh, we will uh, reply immediately and get in touch. Okay, so the monitor, um, the, the platform is composed of five different types of monitors. Uh, the national one, then the one for research performing organizations, monitors for researchers, for institutional repositories, and for research funding organizations. And I will go through them in detail when I do the demo. How did we build this? Although you know some of this already. Well, the basic principles behind this uh, fit with the North strategy for uh, open access in Ireland. So we're, it's built on openness and transparency. So we have done our best to document all the methodologies used. And please let us know if something requires more clarification. All the data is open and public. We adhere to fair principles and international standards to ensure trustworthy um, monitors so that the public uh, is engaged and uh, people actually use it. Then we have readiness and timeliness and comprehensive coverage and accuracy. And so basically based on the open air graphs, uh, uh, use of uh, established uh, uh, methodologies and open databases and operational workflows and the extensive capabilities that it has in, in terms of coverage, we hope to provide insights that are timely and uh, accurate. So, and in terms of engagement and inclusivity, our last principles, uh, this is extremely important uh, for us, and it's a reason why we provided these different types of monitors, so that different users feel engaged and uh, reach out to us in order to improve data and uh, explain whatever is needed and so on. The backbone is, as you know, is the open air graph. Uh, which uh, at its last version includes 130,000 data sources, 3.5 million projects, and about uh, 254 million different research outputs. Um, it includes uh, the graph pipeline, includes several phases, starting from uh, the aggregation of different types of data sources, enrichment by mining, the duplication, enrichment by inference, and finalization, so the final cleaning. All this produces the public graph API on which the National Open Access Monitor for Ireland relies on. And uh, feedback on the monitor is fed back into the graph. Uh, so it creates this continuous loop of improvement. The feedback can be of several types uh, that we will explain uh, later in the presentation. So you can link research products with each other, you can claim research products as your own, you can duplicate organizations, you can provide your project data in order to have dedicated text mining as a funder, you can register your data sources in uh, OpenN. All of these different types of quali data quality improvements are fed back into the graph and then they become part of the graph workflow and pipeline to make sure that you know they're constantly used and so on. So we're working, uh, we're building on sustainability here. Um, these data quality improvements are first viewed in the sandbox and then the production uh, after they have been validated. At this point, the sandbox uh, only RPO and RFO research performing and research funding organization managers have access to the sandbox and we will discuss later a little bit uh, who can become a management. Um, this includes the, the data that is shown in the sandbox is the pre-release version of the graph, new functionalities and new indicators are shown here. And of course the integrated uh, data quality feedback um, that, uh, that I was talking about in the previous step. Eventually, this shows up in the production environment, which is the environment on which I will do the demo today. Okay, let's move on to the demo. 
Okay, so let me see if I can minimize some of these windows. Right. So here, this is the home page of the monitor. Let's see. I'm gonna let me know if it's too big or too small, please. Um, the if you scroll through the landing page, it has some information on the um, benefits of the platform. You can link to the different types of monitors and the different types of user actions that are available, as well as uh, the contact us form. So just a summary page uh, as usual. Now in the monitors. You see here there is a drop down for different the different type of monitor dashboards that exist. National RPO, RFO, researcher, and repository. Uh, if I just zoom out a little bit, you can see them here extended. And there is also the resources and help that I will go through a bit later. Um, that has different links. And then here on the here on the right, there is signing in. At this point, I'm not going to sign in. So everything that I will show you is completely public. Now, let's go to the National Monitor. This is the National Monitor for Ireland. There are two parts of all the monitor platforms. You have the monitor part that includes indicators. OK, sorry. And then you have the browse research products. That is the research output view, where you go and see the particular publications, data sets, and so on that support the visualizations that we see here. OK, so uh, let's go to the indicators first. Now, this is kind of like an indicator report. So you have different tabs here, where you can uh, select and see uh, indicators, this is for scholarly production, and I will go through the others in a while. And each tab has uh, some number indicators at the top. So all publications, peer-reviewed publication, open access peer-reviewed publications with license, for example, here. And then some visualizations that have breakdowns and benchmarking uh, of interest that you can scroll down and view in detail. So for example, here, we have used our foods of science classification. We have level one and here level one and within level one, level two. And uh, one can see, for example, here, the number of peer-reviewed publications within the medical and health sciences. It's just how it is distributed across different uh, uh, medical fields. Here we have uh, our SDG classification system used. Um, Basically, we have uh, uh, all the breakdowns of interest that have been identified uh, by initial surveys of for the, that created this project. Uh, these are quite easy to change. So if there is consensus that some are missing or something uh, additional needs to be done or they should be viewed in a different way, uh, this can be updated. Of course, uh, all of these directly uh, link to the the Iris Monitor database. So whenever there is an update of the graph and an update to the Iris Monitor database, these are also automatically updated. Uh, so the first tab is the scholarly production. Then the second tab is the open access evolution, where here we will provide uh, snapshots of uh, different uh, numbers for the monitor and how they evolved over time. Uh, actually, um, by the end of this week, we will have uh, the next snapshot for the monitor. So here you don't, so this way, you don't only see how open access changes by the year of publication, but actually by monthly, near monthly snapshots of the entire open air graph, uh, which provides additional information. Now here I am in the access rights tab. I uh, just want to clarify here that uh, open access is separated between open access with license and without license. This is because the consensus from the ID survey was that uh, the Budapest uh, definition, the Budapest Open Access Initiative definition of open access should be used, which includes a license. So uh, only the one with the license is truly open access. And let me know that we are here. We have the access rights trends over time for peer-reviewed publications. 
Let me show you some of the intera uh, interactive features that this graphs have. For example, first here on the right, you can click and have, you can view, um, you can view the visualization in full screen. You can print the chart or download the image in different versions. The last one uh, keeps the interactivity. You can and you can download the data behind this table. You can also similar to that. You can click on a view data table, in which case when you scroll down, you view the actual numbers. This or downloading it in XLS or CVS is uh, very useful for someone that wants to create their own analysis. Over here on the bottom left, we have an embedding option, which would, which allows any user to include this frame in their own website. And whenever the graph is updated and the database behind these numbers is updated, that visualization will be dynamically updated as well. So it's a very smart way to include a quick uh, a, a quick monitoring snapshot at the level of interest depending on the user. Now all of these uh, series data series can be selected or deselected, and the graph is automatically adjusted. Okay, here I removed everything. Let's say I want to see only the embargo ones over time. And then the open access with license. So the embargo is still there. As you see, just that the numbers are very low. And then by selecting uh, an area of the graph, I can zoom in. And then I, I can click on reset zoom to zoom out. This can also be seen, uh, these functionalities, by clicking on help here. So this help button, it follows you in all the pages. So first, if you can click on this video to see the basic interactivity functions of all the graph, or you can click on terminology and, con and construction that open up this page that is split in three different um, uh, sections, entities, inherited and inferred attributes, which is stuff that we get from metadata, and constructed attributes. So for example, inherited and inferred attributes as organization, country, access rights, and so on. And then constructed attributes uh, has the gold, diamond, the, the open access uh, levels for different journals, then the routes to open access, and so on and so forth. For the constructed attributes, we offer a definition, and since we constructed it, uh, detailed instructions on how we build it. Again, if something is not clear here, please do reach out. You can reach out uh, by clicking the help button in any page and then clicking on uh, give us your feedback and the contact us form opens up. Okay, then um, moving on to open access routes. Here we have uh, some number indicators some different routes to open access and uh, in, the, in this particular part, you can see that there are additional tabs below um, that uh, have a more, uh, a more of a breakdown of the visualization. So first is open access mediation. So these are some indicators on a repository versus publisher mediated open access. We explain here that repository mediated is green open access with a license, while publisher is golden hybrid. And then we have several breakdowns of interest here as well. Also some uh, top performing uh, funding and uh, uh, per funding and research performing organizations. Um, moreover, here the other tab is unrealized open access. According to the consensus for the project, unrealized open access includes closed access and then green without a license and bronze that where these publications are accessible, however, they are without a license. So we have stacked them here, so that's still separate that closed access, but they're not part of uh, the open access terrain in Ireland. And then you have some different breakdowns of interest here as well. And lastly, the last sub tab here is open access types, okay, where we have green versus gold versus hybrid uh, trends. 
Then we have some fair aspects. So we have uh, a bunch of indicators and breakdowns for uh, licensing. And then we have other fair aspects, such as PIDs, um, funding references, abstracts, ORCID IDs, and so on. Then we move on to the Plan S indicators. Now here the focus is since 2021, where Plan S was implemented. Um, for example, here we have a graph that is the peer-reviewed publication published in Plan S compliant journals. That means in either Diamond Journal, Gold Open Access with APCs, under transformative agreements in transformative journals or other journals. Of course, the definition for Plan S compliance includes additional indicators such as Green Open Access is also compliant, but here we focus on the journal trends and at the end, we have the plan as funders in Ireland at this point, unless we are mistaken, it's only Science Foundation Ireland, uh, so we just have them here. The next tab includes uh, APCs, and here at the beginning, we try to give an overview of the data availability. So there are um, 83,000 publications that were the author or incurred an APC. Uh, but we only have data for about 1,000 of them from OpenAPC. And uh, here also, you, there is a note, you see this button here, APC is reported to OpenAPC, but any co-author institution. So descriptions can be added as needed. So given this uh, low coverage of data, we do have, however, uh, these numbers. And then when you go to APCs versus transformative agreements, here we see the transformative agreements are on the light blue. So how much of the APC costs have started to be covered by, covered by transformative agreements? And you can see which fields benefit the most here in FOS level one, FOS level two. Then we have some cross country uh, indicators. Ireland is always the first. Now you cannot see here because to compare to the second one, the US, the, the production is quite low. But uh, if you do, if you do the zoom in function, you can uh, see the numbers here as well, or you can download the data to see directly. I click here, reset zoom, and back onto the original. So we can do some cross country benchmarking here. And then we aim to provide uh, this visualization uh, stacked by percentage as well, so that we can focus on rates. And then we have some uh, bibliometrics here, uh, downloads and citations. And there are some notes that explain where we got all of these, um, where one can see some uh, data over time and, uh, across uh, different breakdowns of interest here as well. On the right, throughout this entire report, there is, there is this button here that if you click it, the, the filters, uh, the filtering capabilities, functionality shows up. So let's say, for example, I want to have a time range of the last 10 years. And for fields of science, I'm interested. Okay, I, I can type something here, but let's say social sciences. And then I am interested in uh, publicly funded outputs. Okay, and then you can see here that the entire report, you can go to scholarly production, has also been filtered by the same, uh, with the same filters. And if you download the data, the filtered out version will be downloaded. Okay, and then you can clear it all here and uh, go back to the original. The second part of any monitor dashboard is uh, the browse research products where you view the different research outputs. Here on the left, we have uh, a bunch of filters that can be applied. Uh, we have the type of publications, oh, and we saw here at the top which have been pre-selected. So publications and peer-reviewed at this point. And as a reminder, we are in the Irish National Monitor. So we have uh, the type, the document type, whether it's peer-reviewed or not the access rights, the access routes. So we have green, yes or no, the publisher access, bronze, gold, or hybrid, and whether it is not diamond open access journal, the year range, the fields of science, a publicly funded, 
the country. We are in the Irish Monitor, but because of the affiliation of co-authors of publications, we have other countries covered here as well. Then we have uh, funders, uh, sources, and research community. If you select a funder, let's say a European Commission, then uh, automatically the filter expands in order uh, allowing you to choose the funding stream and the particular project. Now let's select, for example, here a uh, gold open access uh, publications. So what do we here uh, we see the results. They can be sorted by relevance uh, or by other uh, criteria. They can the first two thousand results can be downloaded, and we refer uh, users to the data dump in Zenodo. You can click here; it will take you there. Uh, if they want to download the entire data set because it becomes too big. So let's see, for example, here uh, a particular result. So we have uh, the title, the publication type, the year, the two countries that are affiliated, the publisher that is publicly funded, who it is funded by, the authors with their ORCID IDs when they are available, the different PIDs for the article itself, the beginning of the abstract, a link to download the full text when it's available, um, the different uh, uh, sources that provide the article. Also clicking on this, uh, you can link to the different sources. And then there's a linking functionality here that I will explain later. You can share the article, click to get the citation to cite it. The claim functionality, it is not right now highlighted because I need to log in and I will show you how this works in a second. Here we have uh, the access routes. In the particular case, we have a uh, gold and green uh, open access. And here you have some of uh, the citations. You, know, you have the citations and the views. Now, if we click on the particular uh, publication, uh, we open a more analytical view of, of the publication that uh, uh, includes the different versions that we have for each of them, okay, for, for, the, for the same publication with, or with its own metadata. Uh, from the different data sources, we see the licensing that is available in each, how it is offered. And then we have uh, the subjects. And on the right here, and our own fields of science classification, and a user is able to suggest their own if they think something is missing or there's a mistake. Then further down, we have the references, the related research. So these are research products uh, that are linked to this publication. And then you have a different uh, popularity and citation metrics that we take, uh, that we calculated using BIP. Okay, on the right, you also have where it is, who it is funded by, and the related uh, research community. So a lot of information. Okay, um, and the last thing to say here is that there is a, a basic search here, uh, and there is an advanced search that uh, works by you select a field, and then you can add additional fields to refine your search if you're looking for something specific. Now let's move on to the other types of dashboards. So we have the RPO monitors. If I click here, um, here is uh, RP individual RPOs can use this to establish the visibility of their contact in the national terrain, to compare their performance with others, to ensure compliance with open access mandates, find weak spots and so on. So uh, now I'm in the page where I browse the RPO monitors. I can uh, add a name here in order to search for a particular one. And let's say here, they are sorted by the number of publications. So I select here Trinity College Dublin. And again, as before, I have different tabs of indicators. Instead of cross country here, we have cross RPO indicators. And we have the browsing of research products that shows, now in this case, you see Trinity College Dublin is selected um, along with the publications and peer-reviewed filters. All of these, they work like before. 
Uh, and of course, we have changed the indicators themselves to be what we think is more relevant for RPOs. And uh, the, the sections are similar to before. If we go, for example, here to cross RPO, the, again, the, the first one is always the one of the dashboard that we're visiting. So for example, if we scroll down here, then we can see that by average site, so here we have top RPOs by average citations for peer-reviewed publication. Now here we see that in the particular case, Trinity College looks like the, uh, the RPO citations on average is 25. Now, someone comes from Trinity, I don't know if someone's listening, they can say this number is misleading because we have way more publications or something is missing or I don't know anything. And then we will work with them in order to see if there is another indicator here that we can add that is more informative, for example, total publication, total citations, or if, uh, if they believe that for some reason not all citations are counted, we can take a look together and so on. Continuing, we have the RFO monitors. Uh, these are also sorted by number of publications. This is the browse page. You can also type a name here to find organization and RFO you can looking for. RFOs can use this for benchmarking, see open access performance, uh, find weaknesses and so on similarly. Science Foundation Oil Island has joined open air, which means that they have uh, a dedicated text mining algorithm for them only, uh, which means that the records are enhanced because we are able to discover this way additional uh, publication project links and so on. <laughs> Again, you have the same functionalities as before, different types of indicators, filtering, um, cross RFO benchmarking in this case and the browsing of research products. <laughs> then moving on to the researcher monitors. So for the researcher monitors, uh, we don't have a browse here because it's too many, but you can type directly. And then, but you should know that the researcher profiles are tied to ORCID IDs. So if a researcher doesn't have an ORCID ID, they will not show up here. However, there is seamless integration with the, the, or, the ORCID, with ORCID. So if someone makes a change on their ORCID record, it will show up here and vice versa. So let's see how this works. Let me type a name here, <coughs> excuse me. So these are the researcher profiles that match Andrew Bowie. So I click on the first one. And then I see that uh, Professor Bowie here, he has 112 publications uh, and 107 are part of the Irish monitor. So what we do here is that we show the entire record of a researcher. So uh, this is the researchers that have profiles here. They have two things in common. They have an ORCID ID and they, are, they have been, uh, they were at some point affiliated to an Irish RPO or funded by an Irish RFO. So we do keep the entire record here, which is what is also shown if you browse research products, but the indicators that we show are for their performance for the Irish record. And we indicate this clearly by writing uh, Irish when needed just to clarify. Uh, and you can see the total performance in open access. Now let's say that, uh, I want to add more records, something is I go to browse research products and I see that there are things missing from my record. How can I add them more? Now this is through the claim functionality and one can do it either here by browsing or through this way. So you sign in. So now at this point I am a researcher with an, uh, with an ID. So I say, as a researcher, I have to sign in through ORCID. If I am not a researcher, I can sign in via open air or the basic accounts or the institutional account. So I personally have linked my ORCID to my Google account. So I sign through Google, but I'm within my ORCID account. So now I'm signed in. 
And uh, the first time you sign in, you are given permission for uh, the monitor to have access to your ORCID record. I have done this already. So I go to my ORCID links and I can see my entire ORCID record. Notice that I, I have not been affiliated to an uh, Irish RPO, but it doesn't matter. I can see my entire record here. Uh, and then I can discover more research products related to me by clicking on the button here. I can search, let's say, um, so the things that show, show up, there's already a search for Joanna Gripari. And then let's say I can pick the first one and claim it, add this work to my ORCID record. And then it will take me through a series of prompts where I have to approve and eventually add it to my ORCID record. Uh, this means that in the next graph update, this record will both show up in ORCID and in my profile here. Okay, there it's a bit stuck, no, it's okay. Um, all right, then we have the link functionality that allows users to link um, different research products to other research products. So for example, I can just type my name here. I could also add a title. Um, let's add my first name also. Okay, this is, this is my publication. So let's say I want to link this, so I add this here. I want to add this publication. I can also upload a set of DOIs to do that. In a, in a bigger scale. And then let's say I want to link this to a particular project, Data for Impact. The project is here and I add this. Now I, I'm not gonna complete this because these are not actually linked, but again, you will complete this linking and then it will show up with the next graph update. This linking functionality is available to all logged in users, not only the uh, researchers, okay? And uh, last but not least, we have the repository monitors um, where repositories can go and see if their products are accurately reflected and uh, how they perform in terms of uh, access rights and so on. Here, for example, I have clicked on the Corp Open Research Archive and results can be browsed here to see if everything uh, is up to par. And uh, we will have a dedicated training on how this, um, data sources can be registered, reports can be registered. Okay, and then uh, lastly, I'm sorry this took a bit longer, in the resources and help, you can see various uh, documentation, uh, things like the different user actions, you can see more details and how um, uh, how they can be used, the methodology, methodological approach, and technology. And then we have here uh, web statistics and activity logs, where you can see the web analytics for the monitor, uh, as well as actions that were taken by the users, anonymous, of course, and the uh, logs for the, the duplication of names. Whenever something requires your permission to be published, a user action, you will always be asked. You will be taken to a consent form and so on. So if you are logged in, uh, nothing will show up before you give your permission, uh, of course. And then lastly, we have a, a page for uh, engagement and training where you can see the previous uh, webinars and trainings that we had and the upcoming ones. So very, very quickly, I'm gonna uh, go back to the presentation for Leonidas to uh, go over the support options. Leonida, you can just, I'll just keep sharing my screen. Uh, Leonida, we cannot hear you. Yes, Anna. So in my section of the presentation, I'll be covering the support and training aspects of the project, along with outlining the next steps following the policy. Okay, regarding the support, we have a dedicated help desk system for 
the uh, national the, for the Irish monitor in our help uh, in uh, the URL uh, you, you can see in the slide. Uh, so regarding the support services, we guarantee uh, a response with request, with ticket within one business day in order to initiate the resolution process. The resolution for handling these issues vary uh, and they, they depend according to the incident and the, and the, type, the severity type. Uh, when we have uh, content or data updates, uh, we must uh, here we must say that the open graph is updated monthly. So the resolution window of any issue regarding content and data will be from one to two months, and it depends on the time of the month that uh, the open graph will be updated. Managers on the content and data updates can first view these resolutions in the sandbox environment in order to test and validate them, and afterwards they can be implemented in the production environment. So regarding to, to the issue of who can be a manager and what do managers do? Managers do. First of all, we have uh, two types of managers. It's RPO and IFO can have only one primary, primary dashboard manager, which apart from the from accessing the sandbox environment uh, alongside with all the other managers, will also have access to the OpenOrch platform in order to deduplicate uh, the organization on uh, the part of uh, duplicate names and uh, even state parent and uh, child relationships with departments or schools uh, alongside in uh, their organization. We have dedicated the webinars for the OpenOrch platform that will follow in the next month. So the up the upcoming uh, yes uh, the upcoming training events we have uh, the training the second training for uh, research performed organizations on twenty seventh March we have the training for the research funding organizations on April fifteenth for the training of RPOs uh, the agenda will be the management of the Irish Monitor platform the deduplication a short. A presentation of the deduplication in the OpenOrx uh, platform. As I already said, we are going to have a dedicated webinar for this. Uh, linking functionality and the upload DOIs functionality, as uh, Joanna already stated in her presentation. Uh, the part of registering the data sources, the repositories, and any CRIS systems uh, of the institutions in OpenAir via the OpenAir provide, and the uh, compliance with the, the OpenAir guidelines for these registrations. And regarding the RFO, the research funding organizations training, uh, we're also going to, to cover the enrichment through text and data mining techniques and uh, the linking and upload DOIs functionality. You can check out our Genodo community for the latest documents regarding the reports, presentation, webinars, and whatever is relevant to the project, to the Irish Monitor project. You can reach out via our platform, or the help via the help that's the URL or our platform. And uh, we also have the next steps. Let me share my screen. Ah, okay. uh, maybe, Joanna, maybe uh, I think it's maybe to leave to discuss if there's a couple of questions instead of going to the next steps. Okay, we have already answered uh, a few of them. Yes, there are uh, uh, some questions in the uh, uh, chat. Uh, one is uh, um, problems in the analysis of open access publication are uh, the quality of the metadata and guessing whether the uh, publication is available in open access. As in most cases, the metadata does not include this information. In most cases, the license is missing. There is also a problem in identifying and normalizing authors. The ORCID identifiers of the authors can be very helpful, but in most metadata, these identifiers is not given for authors. Also, the affiliation of authors of the publication are not listed. 
Another problem is the classification of publication into field of science fields, as some research results are multidisciplinary. The biggest problem is certainly uh, that there are many publishers who publish the articles in open access, but they are not included in many databases. Uh, for instance, Crossref, Data Sites, Open Air, Open Alex, Open Citations. Many results are in restricted access. How do you solve these problems? At the moment, it's, uh, uh, it's very difficult to get all this data. Okay, let's. Uh, there are several questions. Let me attempt, and then uh, Leonidas can correct me on everything that I say that is wrong. Uh, so first of all, the easiest question, which is the classification into FOS fields, our fields of science classifier allows uh, multidisciplinarity. So this is not an issue. So one publication can be classified in multiple fields and subfields. So that is okay. And we keep the ones that have the highest uh, weight, um, but not the, only the highest, but have a significant weight so that you can say that it's actually on them. Now, um, the, of course, all, all these issues are very valid. So the open air graph tries to solve this by integrating uh, 130,000 data sources. So the major one, but also smaller ones. Uh, in order to have and merge them in uh, in one uh, one publication is merged from several instances into one record. Therefore, the final metadata record that comes out of the open air graph includes the different elements of the different instances from all these different records. Um, also, for in particular for uh, RPOs, we encourage them to register the data sources so they can uh, directly work on data quality and see if everything is included as needed or if something is missing. So in general, these are problems that uh, we uh, we recognize in open air and we work very close to very hard to try to to fix them. For the ORCID identifier, um, uh, at, we, do, we do use them and it's very helpful. It doesn't have a perfect coverage, but okay. Um, we, we do have the, the author names for other, uh, for each publication. It's just that they are not merged into their ORCID record, of course. And then in terms of this, uh, the affiliation, this is an ongoing process that we target using uh, the metadata from the different open air sources, but also the text mining. Uh, Natalia? Yeah, uh, if I may add, I think on the ORCID, this was a request from from uh, from North and, uh, and, uh, and the board that is, uh, is overseeing this because uh, um, it's, uh, it's, the, it's the goal and the objective in Ireland uh, to make sure that you know everything is connected and everyone is using identifiers. So even though we realize this uh, that is it's a shortcoming for the moment, we hope that as time progresses, this is going to be uh, this is going to be uh, rectified. Thank you. Uh, there are uh, uh, also some uh, uh, questions that have been already answered. That is, uh, um, in the research profile dashboard, is there any way to rank uh, the researchers based on publication or citation in a specific discipline? Uh, uh, so this is, a, this is a request for a new indicator, which is uh, something that we can handle using their ORCID IDs. Uh, of course, there has to be a bit of a consensus on this, otherwise the dashboard will become, you know, full. Uh, but uh, we'll definitely make a note. It's, it's definitely something we can do. Yes, we need to check also with the uh, with the island with the island with our. Uh... <clears throat> With Ireland, in order to to build such a ranking indicator for uh, the authors, because currently we have uh, dedicated author profiles, researcher profiles for each for each author without any ranking indicator. 
Yes, I I see Susan smiling, mm -hmm. but I think you know this goes into my initial statement that uh, this is not about ranking. This is about you know promoting learning from each other. So you know I'm not sure that uh, the board, uh, the Irish board, will uh, agree on any kind of ranking. Yeah, just to um, sort of endorse what Natalia is saying. It would be a little contrary to the North um, Action Plan to, to introduce a, a new way of ranking uh, researchers. We are talking about a change of culture here, not replacing, uh, you know, one broken way of doing things with something that's virtually identical, but using open access as the metrics. So um, I can't envision uh, that. But of course, we would like to make sure that this monitor is is useful from a researcher's perspective as well. So we encourage any sort of, sort of feedback from, from authors and individuals, but this is not a, a stick we're developing or even um, a sales tool. This is uh, to help us move forward in a consensual or to achieve consensus on where we need to move forward and what actions we need to take to achieve 100% open access. Um, and to uh, also support that change of culture. Thank you, Susan, and thank you all for uh, uh, answering to this. If uh, we can have uh, like a few minutes, even if uh, we are over time, I will take the last uh, question here in the chat, um, which is uh, uh, if uh, we want to have uh, uh, quality data on open access, we need to get all founders to require that research results are deposited in repositories or archives. This applies to research organizations, which unfortunately do not have policies in place to require their researchers to do so. Unfortunately, uh, this is very difficult to achieve. How have you achieved this in Ireland? Um, have we achieved this is, is a question. And of course, we don't know that until we have an, a monitor that works. Um, but I will say, you know, this isn't the only project funded by the North to working towards achieving 100% uh, open access. We have another uh, repositories project, which is focused on, on building capacity in institutional repositories ac across Ireland. And I think that question will be addressed there. I think the question is phrased in a very kind of top down manner. Um, but I think there's um, there's a real need for investment in local infrastructure and local support um, to increase the capacity of of uh, repositories. And um, so that, I think, will be an outcome of the North. And the same with the mention of, of data site. Uh, the North ha is also funding um, the development of a persistent identifier uh, roadmap and there is a persistent identifier task force in place. So um, the monitor is not the answer to all problems. This is uh, very much a, a multifaceted, um, if you want to call achieving 100% open access a problem or ambition. Um, so I think the great thing about the North is it's actually very joined up in, in terms of its approach and funding the different pieces. So we're in, we haven't gotten to the point where uh, there is 100% adoption of, of repositories across Ireland, but we are aiming to increase the capacity of repositories and there's investigation underway looking at that. So I'd, I'd encourage you to look at that, that North project as well. Thank you, Susan. Uh, I don't know if uh, Natalia, would like to mention anything uh, for uh, the next? Oops. Thank you, know, Susan. Susan, I think it's a it's a it's a holistic approach. You know, the monitor is just the tip of of the iceberg. You know, all of the rest is what makes the difference. Perfect. Okay. Uh, thank you so much for everybody to uh, have been today with us in uh, this uh, webinar. Um, if you have any questions or you would like to reach us uh, out, please feel free to do uh, via our channels, uh, social media or at desk. We will be very happy to hear from uh, your specific case and uh, to build a monitor for you.
uh, we are looking forward to, to show you the next steps in Ireland. So thank you so much uh, to Susan and uh, uh, Jake for the collaboration so far. And uh, see you uh, to the next uh, meetings for uh, the RPOs, RFO, uh, so the founders and uh, uh, the university and the research centers in uh, Ireland. Uh, and uh, we are looking forward to the improvement of uh, this uh, monitor. Thank you so much. Bye. Thanks a lot, everyone. Have a great rest of your day. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you.